But we're going to begin with NBC national correspondent Miguel Almaguer. He's camped out with thousands of his closest <laughs> friends in Madras, Oregon. Miguel, what's it look like there? It's dark. Hey, Matt, it really is uh, incredible out here. Uh, we are expecting that eclipse to begin here in about six hours. And Madras is so special. The reason twofold. Number one, we're expecting clear, sunny skies, which is perfect for viewing the eclipse. And number two, its location. As you see on this map, we are the furthest west where this will be one of the first American cities to go dark as that solar eclipse goes uh, from west to east that we're expecting to be in the dark here for about two minutes. As you mentioned, there are a lot of folks out here. Madras is typically about a town of 6,000. Today it is home to over 100,000 people. They began camping early Thursday and have been here over the last several days. They call the area we're in Solar Town. There are camps, uh, RVs, and tents as far as the eye can see. Some people are paying upwards of $1,500 to glamp out here, all for that perfect spot. It could be the best place in the world to see this solar eclipse. The lines here are getting longer longer and longer. We're expecting about two minutes of darkness. The sky here should plunge into darkness at around 1019 in the morning. We are told by astronomers it's going to be a spectacular show, something they will never ever forget. Because of that, folks are coming from all around the globe right here to Madras, guys. Sounds very cool, Miguel. Thanks very much. All right, let's head 2,000 miles to the east to Carbondale, Illinois. This is the town that will be in the dark the longest. NBC's Carrie Sanders is in position at Saluki Stadium on the campus of Southern Illinois University. Carrie, no football, but a lot of a show this morning. <laughs> it's game day, right? Look, this stadium is going to fill up with 15,000 people. And when you consider the excitement and the mania, they actually sold tickets for folks to come here. And the top selling price, $15 thousand dollars for folks who want to be in the air-conditioned booth here so they're really paying a premium for something that everybody can step outside and see one thing you should recognize is there's going to be a lot of traffic no matter where you are along this point of totality here in Carbondale two minutes 38 seconds and one thing that's interesting no matter where you are when you put on your little paper glasses or if you put on the fancy glasses or maybe you have even a, a welder's shield no matter what if during the moment of totality you do a 360 degree turn you should see what appears to be a sunset every direction you look and as you can see over my shoulder the sun's coming up not a cloud in the sky guys looks like it's going to be a great day carrie you just blew my mind with I'm that sure I, got I don't that, either you may try that. we're going to do a do, -si do later carrie thank you all right the last of the 14 states along the path of totality to go completely dark today will be south carolina nbc's tom costello is getting ready in mount pleasant on the deck of the uss yorktown tom good morning to you Good morning. We're in Charleston Harbor. We got a little bit of lightning this morning. We've got some rain, so we're going to be asking Al very quickly, will this clear out? We are expecting total darkness at about 2.46 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to last anywhere from a minute and a half to two minutes, so it is just now a few hours away till showtime. It may be the most anticipated solar event in history, but from coast to coast, it's a traffic jam of epic proportions, with millions rushing to get the best view. Five million people have flooded into South Carolina, the last state to fade to black this afternoon. Historic Charleston has been sold out for months. How many people are in this town? The city's packed. It really is packed. I would tell you that we're 100% occupied. It's, and there is no rain date. There is no rain date, absolutely. So people are going to come no matter what. At Charleston's City Market, we found eclipse chasers from across the country. It was uh, very unusual. An unusual phenomenon, yeah. And we'll remember it the rest of our lives. It is a communal experience to be in a, this unbelievable moment in time with everybody else experiencing this moment. I think that it would be goosebumps. NASA says the eclipse will move across the country at about 1,500 miles per hour, the so-called path of totality 70 miles wide. For most people, total darkness will only last two to two and a half minutes. And at that moment, there will be a bright flash, the last bit of the bright sun, and you will see the faint outer atmosphere of the corona creating a ring. Again this morning, ophthalmologists are urging people not to look at the sun without those special eclipse sunglasses. Gazing at the sun directly without safe solar filters can burn a hole in your retina. And especially remember that if you're supervising kids, 
Don't let the kids take the glasses off and gaze at the sun. And talk about distracted driving. AAA is warning drivers to pull off the road if they want to look up. Please don't wear the Eclipse shades while driving. And for people who have to drive, turn on your headlights and keep your eyes on the road. And they also make this point. It's not just whether you are paying attention, but of course, whether the guy next to you is paying attention and is distracted. So you got to be really uh, very much aware of what's going on around you. Coast Guard making a very similar warning for all the boaters out there. Practice safe boating this afternoon. Guys, back to you. Yeah, there's a lot to think about. More than meets the eye, no pun intended. Yeah, absolutely. Tom, thank you so much. And as mentioned, he's in good company. Al's on the Yorktown as well. Good morning, Al. Hey, good morning, guys. And in fact, Charleston Harbor is going to be jam-packed later this morning with all these boats, and they're going to be all looking up. Uh, unfortunately, we've had some showers around, and we're going to take a look now at the forecast going coast to coast. We start in the Pacific Northwest, and that is where it is going to be best. From Newport, Oregon, Sun Valley, Idaho, Casper, Wyoming, you've got great weather. Then we start to make our way into the midsection of the country. When this starts out, it's going to be traveling at almost 3,000 miles per hour, then slows down to its slowest point right around Carbondale, Illinois, where it will start to cloud up, unfortunately, for Kerry and all of his friends. And then as we make our way further to the east, we're going to see Nashville looking great, hot and humid, Greenville, South Carolina, some clouds. But the closer you get to the coast, we are looking for a chance of thunderstorms here in Charleston, totality at 2.46 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. We've got another interesting graphic. This is the amount of solar radiation we expect starting at 12.45. The whiter it gets, the less the solar radiation. As this path comes across, we are going to see temperatures drop anywhere from 5 to 15 degrees. And for all the solar plants out there, we could see a drop of 12,000 megawatts of solar energy. That's the, the difference between powering up to 2 million homes. So it is going to be interesting as it makes its way across the country. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.